All right. So if you if you did if you study these sites, you probably realize right away that this is the same thing as site translation number twenty three. It's actually the same site, same identical, except that it has a different format. So site translation number twenty seven and twenty three are basically the same. I always put this there because this is such an important site. Um, that I want you to do this twice and also to see whether you have been doing some work. Unfortunately, I didn't connect to Zoom and you're not connected either, so I couldn't monitor you, but that's fine. The idea is that you should have been able to identify the fact that this is the same site. So I'm going to do the rendition, which is, although we already did that, but I'm going to do it again just for uh, just to make sure that we I render all the sites for all the, uh, uh, for all the, all the uh, sites that are in your class manual, okay? So let's do this. And we, we talk about this, the beginning and all that stuff. So uh, let's see how it goes. The following was executed or took place in the city of Baji Baja Mexicali, Baja California at 10 a.m. on May 15, 1989. Mr. Guillermo Manero, appears before the undersigned attorney Francisco Pereira, assistant federal prosecutor, who participates uh, as required by law by bringing, bringing witnesses who at the end sign and certify the content of this document. Mr. Guillermo Manero is affirmed uh, according to the law, so that he tells the truth regarding facts pertaining to others, and he is urged to do the same thing regarding facts pertaining to himself. He is notified that this statement is under penalty of perjury, and in regards to his particulars, he stated that his name is as indicated in written form, that he is 33 years old, married, and with basic education. Furthermore, he indicated that he is a federal judicial police, native of Mexico City and resident of this city. Uh, in addition, he stated that his legal address is the one that he occupies in the uh, police, in the offices of the police force that he belongs to. In regards to his, his appearance, he stated as follows that in this proceeding he has before him, and he reads out loud, official document number 481, dated May 11 of this year. Furthermore, he acknowledges that the signature that appears at the bottom of that document is his signature because he put it there in his own handwriting, and it is the same one that he uses in all uh, notarized as well as unnotarized matters. He also stated that this is all that he has to say, and after reading the foregoing, he ratifies it, signing at the bottom and in the margin of this document for his proper certification before the undersigned and the witnesses who are present and who signed and certified the content of this document at the end. So it's a site that it is just basically, you know, the same site that, that it's the same thing as number 23. So, uh, you know, it's just it's just kind of a tricky thing because when you look at it, you don't see the same format. You know, it's the same content, but it has it's written in different formats. The, uh, it looks, the side number 23 is one, one sentence after the other, where this one is more um, broken into different, kind of, I guess, paragraph or, or, or whatever, yeah. So, any questions on this? We're going to go to number 26 now, which is the one before. And this one, uh, you don't have to do. We're going to use it. We're going to use this site to learn some material regarding family law. And that's what we're going to be doing. Usually, that's what I, uh, I do uh, with this site translation. And we'll do exactly the same thing today. So, this is site translation number 26. One of the things that you should be aware of is that family law matters they involves basically two parties. The one who files a petition for the dissolution of marriage and the one who responds to that petition. So if I want to divorce my wife, 
I'm the one who's going to file the petition and my name is going, my, my, I am going to be known as the petitioner. And then my wife has to respond to that petition and then her name is going to be, or he will be, she will be known as the respondent. So there are two parties involved here, petitioner and respondent. The petitioner, we call it parte actora, and the respondent, we call it parte demandada. You may say, well, what exactly you have to respond? You know, in, in her case here, I'm, I'm, I'm initiating this case, you know, so I filed the petition. And by the way, the word petition no es peticiona. Eh? In family law, petition is demanda. And when you say dissolution of marriage, is divorcio. Divorcio. So if I were to say, oops, divorcio. If I were to say petition for dissolution of marriage, that will be demanda de divorcio, for example. So it, it, what does the petition include? The petition includes claims, which in Spanish we call them claims, which in Spanish we call them pretensiones. And basically it's what I want. Okay, so I'm initiating this case, so I, this is what I want. I want to keep my house, I want this, I want that. And then the respondent, in this case my wife, is going to have to respond to those claims and will probably not agree with some of them or most of them and will agree with others. So it, it's just, um, it's just uh, a negotiation, so to speak, right? So when we look at the first sentence here that says, La parte actora reclama judicialmente. Every time we see reclama judicialmente means that basically files in court. And then el divorcio, this is the dissolution of marriage, not divorce. Because in, in California, as well as many states in the union, uh, you use the word divorce once it has been granted. Before it is granted, it's known as the dissolution of marriage. Sometimes they do, some states, they do use divorce proceedings because they are assuming that the proceeding is leading to the granting of the divorce. But it, it's much more common to see uh, the solution of marriage for uh, divorcio than divorce at this stage. And when you file that dissolution of marriage, it could be of two different types. You can, you know, you, maybe both, both of us are in agreement so if we, if we call that, if they are in agreement, we talk about divorcio voluntario. Which is uh, uncontested dissolution of marriage. But we may want to, we, maybe we, don't, we do not agree. So that will be divorcio necesario. Now, this has changed in Mexico in the new code. So that will be contested, this one. And what I mean by, it, by changing is they don't have this necesario y voluntario any longer. What they have in Mexico is different now. They have divorcio express, they call it like that. Um, so, but in this case, it's a, it's a more traditional document, and they talk about the solution, divorcio necesario, which is contested dissolution of marriage. We are in disagreement. You know, we may want to get divorced with each other, but if there is any issues in my claims, in mi, in mi, si hay algún punto en mis pretensiones, that is not settled by both parties, that is not agreed by both parties, en, en los cuales ambas partes no concuerdan, then you're going to have a contested dissolution of marriage. Entonces va a tener un divorcio necesario. So it doesn't mean that you, you, know, you still may want to get divorced, but the divorcio voluntario means that every, both of them want to get divorced. And 
and they agree who's going to keep what, which is very rare, unless there are no assets. See, if there are no assets and there are no children, then it's always divorcio voluntario. They both want to get divorced. That's it. But if there are assets and there are children, this is going to be less common. Um, and by that I mean. Uh, what's going to be less common is to have un divorcio voluntario. So when it says la parte actora, which is the petitioner, files in court a contested dissolution of marriage, uh, and then you can say against his spouse. Now, one of the things that you do in anything has to do with family law is determine uh, who is the male, who is the female in a traditional marriage, right? If it's a non-traditional marriage, then you wouldn't have that issue necessarily. Because when you talk about a spouse, see, English doesn't have gender, but Spanish does. So do we say, conjuge, that would be probably be the neutral one. Consorte, that's still neutral one. But for example, for things such as petitioner, do we say la parte actora? Or if it's, that will be gender neutral. But if you want to say for, um, Petitioner for a female will be la actora. And petitioner for a male will be el actor. That's nothing to do with, we do with acting. Huh? And uh, so sometimes it's a good thing to keep, use parte actora, parte demandada, to keep gender neutral. En a virtud de que, by virtue of the fact, que además de la incompatibilidad de caracteres, Esa palabra, incompatibilidad de caracteres, se traduce al, al inglés, se conoce como... There are many options to, this, to do that, but you can say uh, irreconcilable differences. That's the translation for incompatibilidad de caracteres. Existentes entre ambos, that exist um, between them. La demandada, la demandada es lo mismo que la parte, la, perdón, la, the respondent, es la parte demandada. So now we know, when we read that, that in this, is, this is, seems to be, uh, if we keep reading, let's imagine that it talks about el, el actor or somewhere there is a, an indication that the one who files it is male, then we know that there is a male, female, it's a traditional marriage. You could have two females getting divorced, right? So... It, it, you, you just don't know necessarily, but as you read the site, you figure that out, really. So la parte demandada, it doesn't matter when you go into English, because it's still going to be the respondent, right? Se ha separado del hogar conjugal. Hogar conjugal, hogar conjugal is marital dwelling. Write this, marital dwelling. Hogar conjugal, conjugal. Mm -hmm. That's a typical line. Por más de seis meses sin mediar causa justificada es good cause. Para hacerlo, good cause to do so. Y como esta situación es anti, anti jurídica e ilegal, it's against the law. And illegal. It's the same thing, really. Y no puede per perdurar indefinidamente. It cannot last forever, right? Perdurar indefin indefinidamente means that it cannot last forever. Recurre a la vía judicial. Comes to court. Vía judicial is it's just the court itself. Demandando el divorcio. En este caso, demandando va a ser exigiendo. So demanding is in English. Because remember that la palabra demandar quiere decir exigir también. So when it says demandando el divorcio means demanding the dissolution of marriage. We're not going to use divorce, right? Con todas las consecuentes, consecuencias inherentes, with all inherent consequences, to the dissolution of the marital bond. Now the translation I'm going to write here is the translation for disolución del vínculo matrimonial. Dissolution of the marital bond. 
So now that we have kind of dissected this site, the first sentence, the first paragraph at least, let me do the first paragraph for, for you. Petitioner files in court a contested dissolution of marriage against his wife by virtue of the fact that besides the reconcilable differences that exist between them, the respondent has left the marital dwelling for over six months without any good cause to do so. And since this situation is against the law and it is illegal, illegal and it, can long, it cannot last forever, petitioner, because you can't you know, use the verb in English, you have to put the subject, the subject verb and then the rest, petitioner comes to court demanding the dissolution of marriage with all the inherent consequences to the dissolution of the marital bond. Mm -hmm. Second paragraph, se ha dado entrada a la demanda. When we talk about the eh, eh, entrada a la demanda, we're really talking about uh, accepting. And demanda, remember, is petition. So basically, that entrada is, is to accept. So what you are... That entrada. So what, when you say se ha dado entrada a la demanda en la vía y la forma propuesta, all you have to say is that the petition has been admitted or accepted. En la vía quiere decir in the jurisdiction. La vía penal, la vía civil. Y la forma propuesta, in the proposed jurisdiction and the proposed manner. Se ha emplazado a juicio. Remember, emplazar a juicio is to summons. So emplazar a juicio is to summons. So, se ha emplazado a juicio a quién? Necesitamos saber a quién, ¿no? If you keep reading, y en los términos de ley a la parte demandada. So, when you transfer that into English, you have to start with the subject. So, you will say, the respondent has been summoned to appear in this trial under the terms of the law, or according to the law. Que la señora Teresa Pereira por su escrito. Escrito, remember, escrito is brief. That's what escrito is. Eh, relativo que obra en autos is pertaining brief. Que obra en autos. Hmm? Que obra, so let's write pertaining for relativo. Uh, que obra en autos, obra en autos, that is part of the record. You could say that it's included on the, in the record. That's perfectly fine too. La ha confesado en todas y cada una de sus, de sus partes. Pero ¿qué ha confesado? Estamos hablando de la demanda, right? ¿Y qué quiere decir en español que se ha confesado? Has, been ac has accepted all the claims. Cuando decimos, la ha confesado la demanda, means that, that that party has accepted all the claims. There is no issue. So, confesado is accepted. Or to accept. Cada una de sus partes, esto es, that is, que es casada legalmente con el actor, married, legally married with the petitioner. Now we know that petitioner is male. So when you say traditional marriage, the male is the one who started the whole thing, the female is the respondent. No haber procreado ningún hijo, didn't bear any child, que es verdad que se vio precisada dejar el domicilio conyugal en los términos expresados en la demanda. It's true that he, he, she, was, she had to leave the marital dwelling under the terms indicated in the petition, y que, petition, perdón, y es conforme en divorciarse. And she is in agreement. And now you can say to get divorced. Because cuando se divorcia a alguien, quiere decir que ha sido otorgada ya para el, por el juez. So the second paragraph reads as follows, or transfers as follows. The petition has been admitted in the jurisdiction and in the manner in which it was proposed. The respondent has been summoned to appear in the trial under the terms of the law. Mrs. In, Mrs. Teresa Pereira, through her pertaining brief that is part of the record, has ad, accepted 
each and every part of this petition. That is, that she is legally married with the petitioner, that she didn't bear any children, that it is true that she had to leave the marital dwelling under the terms indicated in the petition, and that she is in agreement with getting divorced. Now, last paragraph. Que esta confesión expresa this explicit acceptance, right? Implica allanarse a la demanda. Allanarse a la demanda quiere decir agree allanarse. It's to agree with the petition. Really means, you know, I'm not going to fight it, right? That's what it means. Misma que ha sido ratificada, ratified, antes la presencia judicial is before the court, right? Por lo que había, por lo que habiendo recaído acuerdo, quiere decir, since there is an agreement, las partes, se citan las partes para ir sentencia, the parties are summoned, citar, or subpoena, but it, because they are parties, you cannot subpoena parties, you subpoena witnesses. So it will be the parties are summoned para oír sentencia, to hear judgment, oír sentencia, to hear judgment. Se dicta esta como lo ordena la ley. Dictar es to enter, right? So, this, cuando dice esta, ¿a qué se refiere? La sentencia. So, this judgment is entered as ordered by law. So, now I'm going to do the third paragraph and I'm going to do the whole site, okay? That this explicit uh, ad acceptance implies that she is in full agreement with the petition which has been ratified before the court. Since there is an agreement, uh, the parties are summoned to hear judgment. Judgment is entered as ordered by law. So now we're going to do the whole side. Petitioner comes to court requesting the uh, contested dissolution of marriage against his wife by virtue of the fact that besides the irreconcilable differences that exist between them, the respondent has left the marital dwelling for over six months without any good cause to do so. And since this situation is against the law and illegal, and it cannot last forever, petitioner comes to court demanding the dissolution of marriage with all the inherent consequences to the dissolution of the marital bond. The petitioner has been uh, admitted in the jurisdiction and in the manner in which it was proposed. The respondent has been summoned to appear in this action under the terms of the law or according to the law. Mrs. Teresa Pereira, through, her per, through a uh, pertaining brief that is part of the record, has agreed each and every part of, with, with each and every part of this petition. That is, that she is married, legally married with the petitioner, that she did not bear any child, that it is true that she had to leave the marital dwelling under the terms indicated in the petition, and that she is in agreement with getting divorced. This explicit acceptance implies that the respondent is in full agreement with the petition, which has been ratified before the court. Since there is an agreement between the parties, the parties are summoned to hear judgment. Judgment is entered as ordered by law. Any questions on this? Any questions? It's a good sight. You may say, is this coming in my, uh, in my state exam? Possibly. 15% chance of getting something like this. That's why we kind of come back and revisit this problem or this subject matter, I call it problem, but this subject matter in your last course, which is the one that, uh, uh, you know, the course that, uh, that we call the preparation for the, um, for the oral component of the state exam. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to do one more site, which is number 28. And this site is completely different to the ones that you have been doing, okay? So this one has a lot of slang. So now you have a different situation. Now you could imagine that's 28, that's an eight, okay? Imagine, you know, all this legalese and all that stuff, they kind of disappear here except at the end. This has a lot of slang. So is it a possibility? Absolutely. They do give you sometimes sites that contain a lot of slang and they're usually slang from Mexico. So I'm gonna give you four and a half minutes to read it. If you don't know slang, the best way is to figure out based on context if you can figure out what it is. But if you don't know, don't guess anything, please, okay? So let me give you four and a half minutes to read it starting now, please. 